Welcome everyone to today's webinar, Zoom 4.0. My name is Raul Montez. I'm a content marketing manager here at Zoom located at our headquarters in downtown San Jose, California. Uh, before we get things started, I do want to point out that we're actually using our webinar platform to host today's webinar. So if you have any questions during uh, the webinar, go ahead and use that Q&A icon there on your screen. That will bring up the Q&A panel. You can type in your question in the space provided uh, and click on the send button. You can also submit your questions uh, anonymously as well. I also want to point out that we are recording today's webinar, so we'll make sure to send out a follow-up email with the link uh, to the recording. Uh, right now, what I'm going to do is uh, actually introduce uh, one of our presenters slash moderators for the day, uh, Janelle Rainey. She is one of our marketing guru uh, people here at Zoom. We're also joined by Dan uh, Kiersman here, uh, as well as uh, Natasha Awalia. So I'm going to kind of let you guys introduce yourselves. I'm going to kind of go in the background here uh, while you guys take over. So uh, go ahead and kick things off. Great. Thanks, Raul. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We have some really exciting content to go over with you about what's new in Zoom 4.0. And joining me, I have Natasha. She is our product manager for the webinar platform. And Dan, out of our Denver office, is one of our sales engineers. So we're a really great audience here. We have a few people. Um, uh, we have a huge audience today, so again, thank you guys for all showing up. We also have somebody on from support um, helping out with um, the Q&A. So if you do have questions about your upgrade, um, we're going to try to go through the whole presentation and the demos, um, and we'll hold most of the questions to the end, but please go up, feel free to go ahead and put things into the Q&A. Um, so what we'll cover today, we're going to talk about webinar features and how we can reach a bigger audience. Uh, better meeting experiences within collaboration, so some things we've put into Zoom meetings. We're going to talk about our Zoom room solutions and some upgrades we've made to make it more enterprise ready, and then our developer portal. But maybe before we get started, Ro, would you mind kicking off a couple of polls just so we get a, um, a little taste of where the audience is? So let's just quickly, uh, if you could put in, have you updated your Zoom client? It's just a quick yes or no question here. I think most of you are Zoom customers. Uh, so See if you can put that in. We'll give you a minute here. All right, and Roll, why don't we show the results there? All right, great. 67% have updated the client. That's fantastic. And 34% hopefully uh, today will convince you to go ahead and do that. Um, and did we have one more poll that we were going to be asking about which client did they update, whether it was desktop, there's Zoom rooms, or mobile devices. Hopefully, if you checked yes, if you're the 67% that did, hopefully you're selecting which ones you're using and you've updated all of them. All right. Yeah, the poll is up around. Let me know when you want me to end it there. All right, let's go ahead and end that. All right, 99% have done the desktop, fantastic. The mobile apps um, also very high with 38% and 12% Zoom rooms, which I'm guessing that's just because less of you are Zoom room customers. I know we have a lot of uh, people on this webinar who are free or pro users, uh, so maybe not familiar with our Zoom rooms product, and we'll, we'll be sure to cover that and go over it. Great, thank you. And with that, I am going to pass this off to Natasha. She's going to tell us about some of the new webinar features. Thank you so much, Chanel. Hi, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for joining us for this exciting demonstration and discussion around our 4.0 features. I'm super excited to kick off the demonstrations with one of my favorite features, which is Facebook Live and YouTube Live integration with our webinars. In fact, we are broadcasting this webinar live on Facebook right now. If you go to the link that we just posted in the chat window, you will be able to experience it for yourself. You might want to turn off the sound on the Facebook end to avoid hearing me twice, though. So while you're looking it out, what is Facebook Live and why is it awesome? Facebook Live is the ability for you to broadcast your webinars onto Facebook or YouTube, expanding your outreach significantly. There's four reasons why it's awesome. Number one, gallery view. Let's demonstrate that right now. Janelle, if you stop screen sharing, we'll have you and me broadcasting our video on Facebook. So while there Facebook... We are. We're live. <laughs> Here we are having this conversation on Facebook Live. While Facebook Live by itself is a one-to-many medium, with webinars, you can do a many-to-many. -many. So you could be having a group discussion with two separate panelists and broadcasting your video to thousands of people, in fact, millions of people on Facebook or YouTube. That's one. If you get back to the screen share, 
On Facebook, you'd be able to see the screen share and a thumbnail of me speaking in the active speaker corner. Number two, Facebook and YouTube actually let you broadcast to millions of people. Um, with webinars, the traditional limit is like 10,000 people, but with Facebook or YouTube, you can go up to millions of people. Number three, Facebook actually prioritizes the live content over everything else. So if you are a Facebook user or YouTube user, you will see the live content on top of your stream. Number four, with webinar and Facebook, you can webinar once and Facebook live stream anytime. So that's Facebook live in a nutshell. I'll pause for questions. And if not, we can proceed to the next feature. Great. And we also have the YouTube live as well, which is really um, a, a great feature. You can either use one or the other um, at, the same, at, at one time. Exactly. And I actually want to add one more thing to that. When you're broadcasting a video on Facebook, you actually cannot do things you can do in a webinar. So you can do things like questions and answers, polls and chats. But on Facebook, you can like, share, and comment the video with anybody else. Great, and we are getting a few questions here. Uh, one was asking, how do I broadcast? So I'm in the webinar client. What do I need to push to get that? Excellent question. Very straightforward. Once you're in the webinar and you're the host of a webinar, you just click on the More button at the bottom, and you click on Go Live on Facebook. And you authenticate yourself to Facebook or YouTube using your Facebook credentials. And you can post either to your own Facebook page or to a page that you manage on Facebook. You can also choose the privacy settings that you want to, that you want to post the video on. So you can do public or private or only to your friends or only to yourself. Great. And then Susan's asking, can I do this to a private group within Facebook? Yes, you can. So when you decide to post to a page, if the page that you're posting to is actually private, then it will be posted to a private group. Great. So it's really whichever account you're going to in Facebook that you're the admin of. And if it's set up as private, that would work fine. Exactly. Uh, Michael's asking, can you do both at the same time? And no, you can't. You do have to pick one feed or the other. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right now, it's a, it's a, you have to make a decision. You probably don't want to post to multiple platforms at the same time because you have to manage um, as well. But at, at, at some point in time, we'll probably provide you the, the, the uh, means to actually broadcast to any platform. And then, then you can broadcast not just Facebook or YouTube, but any other streaming platform. And at that point in time, you can broadcast to multiple at the same time. But through the interface, we will only support one at a time. Great. And Donnelly is asking um, if YouTube Live is live yet. Um, yes, it is. We just decided for this demo purposes to only show the Facebook Live at mm -hmm. this point. Great. And then do you want to talk a little bit about some of our meeting experiences we're going to be showing? Yes, absolutely. So this was for webinars. Facebook Live is a webinar-only feature. Now I'm going to switch gears and talk about meeting features, except for the attention indicator, which is the third bullet, is applicable to meetings as well as webinars. But let's, let's switch gears and talk about multi-share and waiting room and city, which are meeting-related features. So switching, switching to multi-share, um, and we had a question about we can do a demonstration for this. Unfortunately, we're on a webinar right now and not a meeting, and so doing a demonstration on a webinar with multi-share is not possible at the moment, so we'll have to go with a screenshot. But I'll do my best to explain through this on how this works and how you can use it and what it looks like. So multi-share essentially is a, it's a differentiating revolutionary feature which does not exist with any of the platforms today. What this does is it takes away the whole, hey, can you stop sharing, Janelle, because I want to stop sharing, start sharing. Anybody in a meeting can share at the same time. And on the receiving end, if you have multiple screens, you can look at the content side by side. If you have a single screen, you can actually switch between the content by clicking on the, the header on top, the floating header on top of your Zoom app application. Um, in order to enable this feature, though, as a host, you have to go into this, the, the lower, the footer, and click on the multiple button participants can share simultaneously. It's not enabled by default, but it's super easy to enable it. And once you enable it for a meeting, it will be remembered for all the meetings that follow. And in this example that we're showing, as you can see, it's, it's very valuable for things such as design reviews. If you have two separate design teams who are sharing their designs in remote locations, you can actually look at them side by side as opposed to going, hey, Janelle, can you share? And then, Dan, can you share next? Yeah, that's a huge time saver. I know being in marketing, having that side-by-side -side comparison of seeing the two designs that you're looking at, um, it just really saves a lot of time. Right. That's great. And there is no limit on how many people can share. If you have 50 people in a meeting, all 50 people can share at the same time, although you probably won't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so that's great. 
Malta share. Um, we'll take questions in the chat window and I can take more uh, after we finish the meeting section. Let's talk about the next feature meanwhile, which is waiting room. Now waiting room is a very important feature if you're one of those who uses the same meeting ID through your day to handle back-to-back -back meetings. Doctors do that a lot, healthcare physicians do that a lot. Um, so what happens a lot in these situations is let's say I have a meeting coming at 11.15 and my 11.15 meeting participants decide to jump on early, barging into my previous meeting. Now, I, if I enable the waiting room, I'll get a notification saying, hey, you have four people who are trying to join this meeting. If I click on that see waiting list on the screenshot below on the, top, on the bottom left, I'll see who it is that's waiting. I'll get their names. I can choose to either admit them or I can choose to remove them. On the attendee side, if I'm in the waiting room, I'll be notified that I'm actually in a waiting room at the moment of this particular person's personal meeting room or a scheduled meeting. Once I get admitted, it'll be the same experience as it is once you get into a meeting. If the host decides to remove me, I'll get a pop-up saying, you are not being allowed to let in at the moment. Please try again later. So super important feature if you're trying to protect your privacy and trying to control who gets into your meetings, especially if you're using the same meeting room or ID back-to-back -to -back for back-to-back -back meetings. Yeah, it's great. I can definitely see healthcare using this quite a bit of if you're using that same meeting ID and you want that privacy of who's coming in. Um, really exciting feature, especially for that vertical. Mm -hmm. Um, the third feature, which actually applies to both meetings and webinars, is called Attention Indicator. This is extremely valuable if you're running meetings and you're trying to gauge the engagement score of your attendees or your webinar viewers so that you can, you can maximize, you know, maximize their, their inputs. Um, the way this works is if you're an attendee on a webinar or if you're an attendee on a meeting and you're not paying attention to the Zoom window that, that, a, that a presenter is sharing for more than 30 seconds, this clock icon goes up next to your name. Only the host can see it, or in case of a webinar, a panelist can also see it, and they can call, out, call you out, or they can be like, hey, um, you know, anything we can help you with, do you have a question or what have you, but just you know, be, being aware of where your meeting attendees are helps you increase the effectiveness of your meetings. In fact, with this webinar, as a panelist, we have a view into seeing who's paying attention and who's not. So you might want to get back to your Zoom screens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we'll see that little clock indicator if you're busy. Um, Natasha, there are some Q&As rolling in, um, actually related back to the waiting room. Um, mm -hmm. And one was asking, what's experience like for the person waiting? Um, and I will actually just go back to that slide. Right. Um, and it's right here. They just have the please wait for the meeting host to let you in. Um, and there was another question about, did, did this work with Zoom rooms as well? It, it should work with Zoom rooms, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And Mary's asking, how do I tell if the person's paying attention? And if you can see on our screen there, there is the little indicator uh, right next to the person's face, right next to Sean. He has some other application running in front of the Zoom meeting. So we would know that he's off busy, look, probably looking at our Facebook Live feed right now. This is fine. <laughs> Great. Is, is it based upon uh, which windows you have in focus? We're not tracking your emotion just yet. We are relying upon <laughs> windows you have in, in front of the Zoom window to figure out that you're not paying attention. All right. And I see some people saying, I am paying attention <laughs> for real. Uh, great. Fantastic. And uh, thank you, Natasha. And I think now we're going to roll it over to Dan. He's going to talk a little bit about some of the mobile apps um, updates that we've done. Great. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Yes, let's talk about our new version for Zoom 4.0 on your mobile devices. Specifically, I'll talk about iOS today. Um, we now integrate with the um, native UI in iOS. So that means is when you receive a Zoom call, whether your phone is locked or unlocked, you can answer that just like a regular phone call. You'll no longer receive just a pop-up notification like you do in our old versions of the app. Once you answer that call, you can then, with one touch, turn it into a video call right from the screen. Um, so you don't have to unlock your phone, go launch your Zoom app, try to catch that call in time, just answer it right from the screen, locked or unlocked. I'm not going to demo that piece today because I'm in this meeting, so my phone's showing a busy status in my Zoom client, but I am going to show the next piece here. So Janelle, if you wouldn't mind uh, stopping the share, I'm going to bring my phone into the screen. Just one moment. Great. Showing one of our other great features of doing the mobile screen sharing. Um. So let's see. 
which is not new to 4.0, but it's, also, it's just a great feature. All right, so, so now is. we There's see my phone. I'm going to unlock and use Siri here. It wants to accept my fingerprint today. One moment. Actually, I don't even think you need to unlock. Uh, you you don't, but I like to. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing for a moment because I don't want everyone question. to see my password. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> uh, we're all going to come steal your phone, Dan. <laughs> yeah, you know. Security, uh, privacy. Yeah. So there was one question here about the attention indicator and whether you could turn that off. And yes, you can. That's the option in your settings. We should talk about that. All these options, whether it's multi-share or um, the attention indicator. When you go into your settings, if you log in on the website, you go into your settings, you can select any of those options, just as you would for video breakout rooms or being able to do remote support. Right. Um, you'll see all the options there to, to change, turn those on or off. And, and just you. to add to that, Janelle, so the, the attention indicator and waiting rooms are both features which are turned off by default. And as Janelle mentioned, you have to go to your meeting settings in the, on the web account page to do them. For multi-share, it's a setting you can turn off from within the client. So once you're in the meeting, you can start, you can enable it or disable it. And again, all these are disabled by default. So if you have privacy security concerns, we hear you. All right. All Great. right. Thanks, so let's Dan, demonstrate I love your Siri dog. now. Yeah, I had to make my <laughs> make my puppy famous. This is Pavel. He loves swimming. So what we're going to do now is uh, a Siri test. Call Samantha Cook with Zoom app. Come on, Siri. Oh, Siri, Siri, Siri. There it goes. And this is a neat feature here. We're about to do a Zoom inside a Zoom. <laughs> so here we've got Sam answering. Hi, Sam. Welcome. Thanks for taking my call. We're doing a live webinar streaming on Facebook today as well. And I just want to show how we can use Siri to make a call. So thank you for joining us. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Sam. Have a great day. Bye. So you can see utilizing our Siri integration, you can make video calls uh, just by, and if you don't have uh, um, a newer phone, you have to press that button to get Siri to come up. And newer phone, you can actually enable the Hey Siri feature and with a simple voice command, uh, jump right into a Zoom meeting. Go ahead and stop the share. You can bring the deck back up, please. Great. Um, I'm, Live live web uh, demos are always fun, right, Dan? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially with their voice commands with Siri. Uh, but we're getting a lot of, hey, that was really cool. Um, so, and also asking if it's available on Android. And right now it's not. That's actually using an iOS feature, right? Yeah, that's correct. It's only available on iOS today. I imagine, hey, Google is on our roadmap, but I don't have any timing on that at this time. Okay. And a couple of questions, people trying to wrap their head around, you're in a webinar, but you started a meeting, what accounts are you using? Can you maybe just explain that real quick? Yeah, so we're in a webinar. Um, what I did there is on my mobile device, I just launched a regular meeting. So by sharing my mobile device into the webinar, we got kind of a little tricky little thing there. We did a Zoom inside of Zoom. So kind of, uh, if you've ever watched the movie Inception, uh, kind of crazy there, huh? Great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of hard to wrap your head around, but yeah, that's very cool. And great demo capabilities, too, being able to show the mobile app. Um, I know a lot of sales teams love that, showing their products. Um, doing Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Getting, you know, you're getting all sorts of questions here. We're also getting about <laughs> your background. Um, I think we saw the little, we saw it green for a minute yep. there. Um, so can you tell us about that? Absolutely. That's a feature built in native in our Zoom client for meeting and webinar. Does not exist for Zoom rooms yet or for mobile devices. But uh, what I have is a simple green screen behind me. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. And you can see I just got a green wall behind me. In my case, it's a portable one. So that's what you saw the edge there. It's just hanging on a little frame here. And with any solid background, uh, greens and blues are recommended, but you can actually use any color. You can then upload images into your Zoom client. And you know, today I'm in Seattle. I could be down there in the Bay Area with Natasha and Janelle. Um, or come this weekend, maybe I'm on the mountains. <laughs> there you go. Somebody's asking if a white wall will work. I know we... Uh I have tried it with white, not very well. We do recommend a, a darker color. Greens and blues, again, are what we recommend. But uh, 
most solid colors will do. You'll, you'll get best performance using green and blue. Great. Thank you. All right. And now we're going to talk a little bit about Zoom rooms. Do you want to introduce, I know when we looked at how many people updated the client, there weren't a lot on Zoom rooms. There's probably a lot of people who aren't familiar with them. Absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, that's a good point. We didn't see a lot of you updating Zoom rooms, so you probably don't have them today. But uh, you may want to reach out to your salespeople after this call and see how you can add one to your account. Zoom Rooms is our solution for a typical hardware video conferencing solution where you can walk into a conference room, have cameras, TVs, speaker phones, and just have a, a video conference screen share, face-to-face -face video. We support one, two, and three screens. And what's nice about our product is it's not a very expensive $30,000 hardware-specific solution like a lot of our competition. What you buy from Zoom is just the license for the Zoom room itself. It's a cloud-based room, and all the hardware is off the shelf. Um, our solution today works on Windows and Mac. Uh, you need USB cameras and speaker phones. And then we have an iPad or an Android as the controller, which has a very easy UI. Um, in the old days, when you're doing a video conference, you probably had an IT person stationed out the side of the room helping the executives run that meeting. Today, anyone can run a meeting on their own. It's just super simple. And I'm going to bring that controller into the meeting in a few minutes. What's great about Zoom rooms is you can put them in any size rooms, from little huddle rooms to mid-sized conference rooms. Uh, we've got some that are more like lounge rooms with couches, um, all the way up to your executive conference rooms with high-end ceiling speakers and mics. All that can integrate into a Zoom room all for a very cost-effective uh, licensing fee. Um, so let's go to the next slide, please. Great. I did have one question that came up. Sophia mm -hmm. asked, um, what were the bandwidth requirements for a Zoom room? Bandwidth requirements for a Zoom room, um, just like our meeting client, very um, meeting to meeting. Uh, on the Zoom room, you can get, just like the meeting client, up to 25 video displays on the screen at once, plus shared content. The reason I say it varies is because the more people that are in there, the more uh, bandwidth you're going to need if you're sharing content, playing a YouTube video, et cetera. Um, as we add more videos, we do scale down them to fit them all on the screen. So um, I don't have an exact number I can give you today, but if you check out our support pages, we do have more information and, and some guidelines around that that you can review there. So on the screen now are some examples of some real live Zoom rooms at uh, mostly customer sites. One or two of these may be ours, but I think these are all at some of our customers. You see some common themes in these. Um, they all have a TV or two on the wall. As I mentioned, we do support three screens as well. And then they all have an iPad controller, some sort of camera. Typically, we recommend a, a PTZ or a pan tilt zoom camera. But you can actually run a zoom room with a standard over the top of your monitor type uh, uh, webcam as well. And then they got some sort of sound source. A lot of these are using um, a USB speakerphone like the Revo Labs. That's a little black square you see in a couple of these rooms. Uh, we've got some others that have done sound bars on the wall. So it's very diverse um, in options, and it allows you to pick the hardware, the components, the price point that's going to meet your needs as every conference room is different. So Zoom rooms, you see there in the picture, we have a oh, back one, please. Sorry. Thank you. <laughs> a very intuitive user interface. Um, touch buttons to control your camera, to look at who's in your meeting, to mute yourself, camera on and off. And again, I'll bring this into the meeting live in a moment. Um, HD quality video conferencing, face-to-face um, -face experience, up to 25 people on the screen at once. Also showing your screen share, uh, your shared content, PowerPoint decks, um, live video, play your YouTubes, etc. Just like you can in the meeting client. Um, I always do recommend at least two screens for the most optimal experience because that way you can have your video feeds on one hand, either an active speaker or a gallery view, so you can have up to 25 at once and your shared content on the second screen. Um, if you only have a single screen, that'll work too, just like you're watching this webinar now with the shared content as the primary focus point and a talking head up in the corner. The Zoom room will do the same thing with thumbnails for the video of Active Speaker, and we actually allow you to move that thumbnail around the four corners of the screen and adjust it to two different sizes or turn it off if you don't want it at all. Wireless sharing is a key feature of our Zoom rooms. We've got a intelligent proximity feature we built into our product where we're actually emitting an ultrasonic pulse from our iPad that when you walk into a Zoom room with a laptop running our Zoom client, the two will detect each other. With a single click from your Zoom client, you can share your screen right up to the Zoom room. So uh, no dongles, no cables, nothing to worry about plugging in. Just walk in, press a button, and you're sharing into your meeting. 
Uh, one touch to me, uh, calendar integration is a key feature of our Zoom rooms. We integrate today with Exchange on-premise, Office 365 in the cloud, and Google uh, G Suite. So with calendar integration, you can schedule meetings from your email client, preferably using our Outlook and Chrome plugins. So you can drop your meeting information right into that email and then add your room resource, and your meeting will appear on the iPad or Android controller in the Zoom room, letting everyone know that that room is scheduled. We'll also display the upcoming meetings for the day on the TVs. And 10 minutes prior to a meeting starting, our iPad controller will actually turn orange with a big start button on it. So all you have to do is walk in and hit the start button, and you're good to go. Um, yes, Dan, quick question on that one. So the, you, you just mentioned the iPad controller, and now we have the Android as well. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about where we are on the development of the Android and um, what, what features you may or may not be getting with that? Absolutely. We just launched our first public uh, available version of the Android controller. It is not quite as feature rich as our iOS controller. Um, for one, there is no AirPlay capabilities. You can't bring that device into a meeting if you wanted to. Not that you typically bring your, your controller into the meeting. That's more of a, a sales presentation piece. Um, it also does not have that proximity share. That is uh, only in our iOS product today. And another feature I'm going to show you shortly, which is our voice command for starting a meeting. That also is only iOS. There are a few other features that aren't available on Android yet, and we do have a detailed uh, listing on our website in our support pages. You can go to support.zoom.us, uh, or is it zoom.us slash support, and uh, click on Zoom Room in the bottom left, and you can find all our documentation regarding Zoom Rooms, recommended hardware, um, feature releases, um, and notes about calendar integration, firewall, bandwidth, all that's there for you. Great, thank you. So the next piece on it, yep, no problem. The next thing on our slide here is enterprise resource management. So new in 4.0, we've enhanced the Zoom admin portal to allow better management of your Zoom rooms. Uh, next slide, please. Great. I did have one more question on this slide. Was, yes, absolutely. Uh, just want a little more information on the intelligent proximity share. So we all love this. It really is great. It's, it uses the ultrasonic sound uh, that we don't hear, but our devices do, and they know that you've walked into the room with that. So from your Zoom client, all you need to do is hit share content, and it knows immediately that you're in the room, and it pops right up. I love it, when, especially when I go into like executives' offices and I'm doing one-on-ones with them, and I don't need to bring dongles or cords, and it's just one. I don't need to ask what the meeting code is or <laughs> anything like that. You just one touch, and you're in. That's, That's right. correct. And sometimes you may have conference rooms that are very close to each other. Uh, the proximity feature works within 10 feet of the iPad. It should pick it up. If you have a situation where your rooms are too close and, not, and your uh, laptop client's not sure which room to go to, it will offer a pairing code, which will be displayed on the TV screen. So you can just type that in and finish that connection. So it's a very okay. useful tool. We use it all the time. Great. And then Jeff's asking, if you don't have a Zoom on your laptop, would that intelligent proximity work? No, the proximity is being detected by our Zoom client on your laptop. So if you don't have the Zoom client, you can still share wirelessly into our Zoom rooms by going to share.zoom.us and putting in the meeting number. Great. And I know some people are asking some questions about some of the Facebook features or the other features. We're going to go ahead and get through Zoom rooms. I'm going to talk a little bit about our development portal, and then it, as time permits, we'll go back and answer some of those questions. So I appreciate you guys being patient with that. We have a huge audience today. I know there's been quite a few questions answered by text as well, so appreciate that. All right. So this next feature is something I... Uh, I think is great. One of the great things about Zoom is we are always listening to our customers and taking feedback, um, putting in feature requests, and bringing new functionality and features to our product direct from our customers. So this is something I uh, often was asking for when I was a customer at Caesars just a few months back. And uh, I'm not the only one. Other customers, uh, some of our larger accounts, such as Uber, who has over a thousand Zoom rooms, said, I need a better way to manage these rooms. I've got rooms all across the world. And I can't just have one interface with a long list of rooms with one option for setting up notifications and alerts. So new in 4.0 is the ability to build a hierarchy around your Zoom rooms. And the sample you see here on the screen, you can choose country, state, city, campus, building, floor, room. You have multiple levels where you can split your rooms out and assign them at different levels. And then by group or by individual room now, you can set which alerts and notifications you want to be sent out 
and exactly who you want those to go to. So now my Zoom rooms in Washington can be sent, notices can be sent to one admin, and my Zoom rooms in New York can go to another. This uh, presently is only available to the account owner in your admin portal, but we're working to bring this to uh, the account admin level in the very near future. Next slide, please. All right, so now is the next live demo of some of our functionality. Siri wasn't too cooperative there a minute ago. It took a moment, so let's see if uh, our voice command zoomer will work a little bit better here. So I'm going to bring up my Zoom controller in just a moment for my Zoom room I'm sitting in here today, and uh, we're going to try some live voice commands to start a meeting. All right, we're hoping the demo gods are with you here. <laughs> All right, I'm just uh, using AirPlay that's built into our Zoom product. It's not actually Apple's AirPlay. We've reverse engineered it and built it standard into our Zoom room and Zoom uh, meeting client and webinar client. So you can now see my iOS device in the webinar. And here goes. Zoom, start meeting. Okay, starting an instant meeting. Okay, so he said, yeah, the controller did something. I'm going to take this step further. I'm going to stop it and do it one more time. And this time I'm going to show you the room come alive. Let me swap my camera here. Uh, switch camera. All right, so now you can see my Zoom room on the wall. And I'm going to do this one more time. Right, just so everybody knows, you're, when you look at Dan's video feed, that's where you're seeing the Zoom room. Yeah, my video yeah. feed, when you hear me talking, I've aimed my camera at the wall where you can see my two screens and my PTZ camera on the wall. And I'm going to say, Zoom, start meeting. Zoom, start meeting. Look at that. Okay. Work. There it goes. Starting an instant meeting. And you see my camera has instantly come alive. And then with our simple UI on our iPad controller, I can move that camera around, zoom in and out. Some people talked about my uh, green screen before, so how about I bring this? Oops. All the way around, you can see me sitting here in the room with my green screen behind me. Hi, everybody. <laughs> we typically use a green screen in a Zoom room because it's not supported yet, but uh, I need a quiet place to uh, be on this webinar and demo the voice commands today. So I'm going to go ahead and end this share and come back to my front camera. And you could bring the deck back up, Janelle. That's great, Dan. Um, I know we were demoing this uh, quite a bit last week to um, you know analysts and uh, customer advisors, and I know healthcare, home healthcare. They thought, "Wow, that's me, fantastic!" But, you know, if somebody's disabled and can't get up across the room to hit the one button to touch the meeting, that that's it's just so easy. Besides, it's just so cool to walk in the room and just say, "Zoom, start the meeting." Um, Absolutely, and I already have customers, you know, bringing feature requests, enhancements to me, you know, what can we do with this next, Zoom, join meeting, Zoom, um, join meeting, one, two, three, four, you know, all the stuff you can do today by touching that controller, I imagine we'll see more voice commands on the roadmap very soon. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. All right, another new uh, feature in our 4.0 release is we have, we're presenting to you our new developer platform. Our developer program has grouped together some of the things we had before around our REST APIs and our mobile um, SDKs. We're now bringing together uh, to you the desktop uh, SDK for our Windows and Mac clients, um, our RTC stack, and all this has been grouped together in a simple developer network website. You can access this from your Zoom admin portal as well as I believe zoom.us slash developer. I'll need to confirm that URL though. Um, what's really neat about our developer platform is actually I want to talk about one of our customers, Viva, just announced uh, late last year their use of our mobile SDK. They've embedded the Zoom webinar or Zoom uh, webinar and meeting experience into their mobile app, and they're working with uh, selling their app to some of their customers with Zoom embedded in it. You can read more about that on our blog site. You can check out our developer network inside your Zoom admin portal or by searching for it on our Zoom website. Um, I think the sky's the limit there when it comes to how you can add Zoom into your mobile apps and, and your desktop apps and web apps. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can't wait to see what more people do with us bringing in the voice, the screen sharing, and the video into their own applications. Um, 
It's been really exciting to see where that goes. Great, and thank you everyone. Um, we will stop the sharing now, just go into the gallery view and do a few more Q&A here that we have in here. Uh, Natasha, it looks like you've been scrolling through a yeah. few. Do you want to answer some that are related to yeah, your products? absolutely. So um, actually there's been a, a bunch of questions on Facebook Live. I think there's a lot of content there. I want to uh, reiterate a few points which will answer the questions as well. So Michael, you asked, uh, can you have the link on Facebook ready? prior to broadcasting so you can promote where to go for attendees. Um, I want to I wanna make sure you, you know, we understand that when you're broadcasting on Facebook, the idea is to broadcast to audiences outside of your webinar attendees. Because your webinar attendees are already in the webinar and they're experiencing the full functionality, the video screen share, questions and answers, and polls and chats. The idea of Facebook Live or YouTube Live is to expand your outreach and put it out to additional channels. You, you know, for the purposes of this demo, we did put it in the chat window because we wanted to demonstrate that to you. But in real life, when you're doing Facebook Live, you, you, you would probably want to put the link up on your social media uh, or your Twitter or your LinkedIn or what have you. And Facebook would already put it up on top of the news feed. Uh, so I hope that answers you know, how, how you, would, you would use it and how to share the link. The, other question I see is functionality difference between sharing the webinar on Facebook Live and actually being in a webinar on webinars. So there's there are differences on Facebook Live. Um, you know you're you're essentially sending the video and screen share stream, and that's it. It's a one-way broadcast of your video stream. So in this particular case, you're probably seeing a gallery view of me and Janelle on Facebook Live. Um, and if you were to share screen, you will have the screen share as the primary content and the active speaker in the top right. The other functionality, such as questions, answers, chats, polls, that's not being broadcasted to Facebook. That's for your webinar attendees only. And we, we want, you want for people to be a part of webinars because you get registrations and attendee reports from webinars. You can track those people down on Facebook following the webinar being, you know, being, being over. But uh, there, there, is, there, is, there is value in having people on your webinars, and there is a different value to having them on Facebook. So um, difference in functionality there, I hope. Uh, I hope I answered. Yeah, I think absolutely. There, there is that difference in functionality. And as the marketer, I know we always want to get who's who's attended the the webinar, who's registered, who's attended. Of course, now it's going to be who's paying attention during the webinar as well. <laughs> uh, so you get all that data on Facebook Live. You know, you'll just see how many views you have. People can comment on it there, but you're not going to get like their email addresses to contact them. Um, there's also questions about uh, what, what sort of delay is that can they expect? Right. It's, uh, we've been counting an average of, of between five and seven seconds. Um, and and that's, that's something that's not up to us. That's just the streaming delays which happen with all streaming platforms. With Facebook, it's been as low as five seconds and as high as seven seconds in our testing over the past couple of weeks. Great. And then again, getting back to some of those differences of the experience of being in the webinar versus viewing it on Facebook, mm -hmm. there's some questions about seeing the polls mm -hmm. um, and the results of the polls. Right. No, you won't. So as I mentioned, only video and only screen share. Uh, like, and as Janelle mentioned, you want to lure people into actually watch your webinars on webinars because you want to get the registration and attendees. And you want to use Facebook Live to broadcast and outreach and generate interest for future webinars and get people more excited about the content you just shared with them. So polls, um, questions, answers, chat, none of that functionality will be broadcasted because we have no way of getting Facebook users to actually respond to polls because it's a one-way stream. We would do it if we could, but with chats, questions, and answers, and polls, it all requires interaction from Facebook, which we cannot achieve with the one-way broadcast that we currently have. Great. Hey, and just, then, uh, Chris, I don't know if I could chime in real quick. So yeah. one, of the, one of the questions that came up, and I think just to kind of clarify when it comes to what you're seeing on Facebook and what's being captured in your webinar recording. So uh, Natasha, maybe you can chime in this. So when I'm basically hosting the webinar, so whatever view I have when it comes to the layout in a webinar, as a panelist, you can see each other in the gallery view or speaker view if you want. So that reflects on the Facebook live feed, correct? Exactly. So the way I'm controlling it is, is when we're not sharing content, you should be able to see four panels of all of us that are panelists on video on Facebook live. In a webinar, if you're attending, you're still going to see that one active speaking panelist, the video that basically auto-rotate to that active speaker. So just to clarify, the gallery view can be seen on Facebook Live, provided the host has that view on his screen. Uh, but in a webinar, the attendees are still going to see that one video panel that auto-rotates to the active speaker. And one of the questions was for recording. So if you're recording to the cloud, now with the new recording feature, Natasha, maybe you can touch on this, also it captures both. So it captures gallery view 
basically your layout and it also captures the active speaker. But in the webinar itself, it's still that one video feed for the active speaker. So just want to clarify that. Yep. Thanks. Thanks, Raul. You're absolutely right on that. So the so the only place you don't see a gallery view cut right now is as an attendee on the webinars. And we actually have plans to change that in the future. So there's consistency since you across all of the, the viewing platforms. Great. Um, and Natasha, I have one other question for you. It's not Facebook. It's about waiting rooms. Mm -hmm. um, and can you put somebody directly into a breakout room from the waiting room? No, at the moment you can't. At the moment you have to put them in the, you can put them in the meeting or you can put them out of the meeting, but you cannot move them to a breakout room directly. Not yet anyways. Um, we can investigate that if that's something that, you know, could be a, 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 a frequent enough use case. But right now it's either in the meeting or out of the meeting. Great. And but I did, once they're in the meeting, you can then assign them exactly, to the breakout room. Absolutely. So it's yeah. a two-step process. You put them in the meeting, and then you put them in the breakout room. Um, I saw another question about the cost of Facebook and YouTube Live. It's included. It's You don't have to pay any more. Um, so yes, go ahead, leverage you know the power of the Facebook and YouTube platform for free, almost free. You're still thinking. Well, you have to pay for a webinar. But yes. <laughs> webinar. You can do a webinar 100 and go to your heart's delight, right, of, right. of broadcasting that out. Um, Dan, we're getting a few questions in here about the Zoom rooms and the proximity. Um, can you use that on a Mac or a PC? Absolutely. Our proximity piece is tied to the Zoom client, so it doesn't matter if you're on a Mac or a Windows laptop uh, or PC. If you've got the, window, the Zoom client running on your laptop when you walk into that Zoom room, it'll be able to detect it and one-click share. I saw another question about, are you saying I can walk into a Zoom room, be on a meeting, and instantly transfer that into that Zoom room? No, that's not our functionality yet, although I've heard others ask about that, and I'm sure there's a feature request out for it. Um, this is purely about starting a screen share, so I want to take the content on my laptop and throw it up on the TVs. If I walk in on a meeting, I'd still have to go over to that iPad and join the meeting manually at this time. Someone else asked about my camera. Yes, that is an Aver uh, 520. Um, Aver is one of my favorites for our Zoom rooms. They make a really great uh, pan tilt zoom camera with a 12x zoom. Uh, you can check them out at aver.com, I believe. And uh, if you have more questions about that, feel, out, feel, free, uh, feel free to reach out to your account manager, and uh, we can get you in touch with our rep over at Aver. They're really great about sending out demos. If you're thinking about setting up a new Zoom room, um, a good, good place to start is working with some of our uh, partners and recommended vendors to get some demo hardware and, and try it out. Um, I thought I saw one other about Zoom rooms here. That I tagged. Let's see one from Donnelly. He's asking about um, new features to record to the cloud. Yes, new features recording to the cloud. As I think uh, Raul and Natasha mentioned already, our new cloud recording does, and this is in a webinar and a meeting client, does allow you to record gallery view. Previously, when you're recording to the cloud, you'd only get shared content and active speaker. Um, but now in 4.0, you can actually get gallery view as well. So I believe when you're recording to the cloud, you'll now see three files um, at the end of your uh, recording. When you go in and look at your recordings, you'll see an audio only still, in case you want to do a podcast or something to that effect. You'll see your regular um, shared content and active speaker, and you'll see the new one, which is gallery view. Uh, we're still working on how we can hopefully have a switch to select which one of the two video views you want. Right now, we'll record uh, three separate uh, feeds for you. Great. And Simon's asking the max number of people that can interact with video. Uh, what, can well, we, we can have up to as many as you want. So yeah, if you have 500 so, people in that meeting, you can have 500 video feeds. You would see 25 on a screen, exactly. um, and you could basically scroll through those screens um, as a gallery view. And then you have the options, of course, to make the active speaker and to pull those up to the front. But And that works the same with our desktop client as well as our Zoom room. You can get up to 25 people on the screen at a time. And in our desktop client, you'll see little arrows on the right and left of your app, and you can page through them. On the iPad, we actually add a little uh, tab underneath the uh, speaker view, gallery view button, where you can page through multiple screens of speakers. So. Yeah. Um, and I should 20. point out that 500 numbers for meetings, for webinars, it's 50 video attendees or Correct. participants that Our are in here. Analysts, right. yes. Right. And of course, your webinar can go out to up to 10,000 people watching. And as Natasha mentioned, millions in Facebook and YouTube. Great. 
And Jose, thank you for the shout out. He's joining us from Spain and said the audio and video is very good. <laughs> That's what we would expect, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that. We do have um, data centers in Europe, in Australia, um, India, and China as well. So uh, globally, you should get really great um, video and audio. So thank you for, for joining us today. We appreciate that. Um, let's see, there's a couple more questions here about the Zoom rooms. One asking about the presence of the room and exchange meeting. Can, Dan, do you see that one? Uh, I'm just scrolling through, just, give me a moment. Do Zoom rooms integrate with presence of room and exchange meeting rooms? So Zoom has its own um, presence uh, engine, if you will, where it can tell if someone's in a meeting or not in a meeting, signed in from their mobile device or their desktop client. Um, we don't integrate fully with your Exchange Outlook free busy, if you will. So if you have other meetings on your calendar, um, you're not going to show busy in your Zoom client. With the Zoom room, our calendar integration is for Exchange on-prem, um, G Suite, that's your Google Suite, Gmail, um, and business uh, Google accounts, and with Office 365. How that works is you set up your Zoom room as a resource in your Exchange or Google environment, and then when booking a room, booking a meeting, you select that resource, and um, if the room is available, you'll get auto-reply letting you know it's available, and the meeting will show up on the calendar. If someone's already booked there, it'll let you know the room's not available. Um, this varies the experience between Exchange and Google. Um, with Google, I know when you go to select a room, you're only going to see the rooms that are available at that time with a uh, Outlook and Exchange. Uh, if you're not looking at the scheduling view, it's possible to pick one that's not available and you usually get a reply if the room's not not available, depending on how your Exchange admin has set up your resources. Does that answer that question? Well, you think, Janelle? I think so. I think so. All Thank right. you. Uh, and this is not a 4.0 feature, but it's a really helpful feature. So Maureen, thanks for asking about this, about how do you find your personal Zoom number? You want to I talk can, about that one? Yeah, I can take that. <laughs> um, in your admin portal, so when you log into your Zoom website, and you can actually do this in your Zoom client as well, under settings, I believe. It is. When, yeah. you, when you go look at your profile, um, you'll have a meeting number listed in there that's uh, dynamic when you first sign up for Zoom. There'll be a random uh, nine-digit number. You can edit that section and put in your own 10 or 11-digit number and then there's a checkbox to say, always use my PMI. That's your personal meeting ID when scheduling meetings. So a uh, well, common thing yeah. I like to do, my PMI is my phone number. I can give it out to people really easy. Yep, give them my cell number and uh, for Zoom or for phone calls, it, it works great. Again, that's in your profile settings in your Zoom client or in the web uh, admin site. Yeah, I definitely encourage everybody to do that. It makes it so easy to you know your phone number, you know your PMI. Um, and if you need more tips on how to do that, you can, of course, visit our support site. Just type in personal meeting or PMI, and you'll find articles on how to do that. And PMIs can be set for Zoom rooms as well. So you can have designated meeting numbers for all your Zoom rooms for instant meetings. Great. Janelle, I see a few more questions in uh, Facebook Live. I'd like to answer them live real quick for the benefit of everyone. Um, there was a question about uh, with, face with webinar streaming on Facebook Live, can you, up can you stream onto personal page, business page, Facebook group, or Facebook event page? Yes, you can. Um, at the time when you go live on Facebook, you'll be given the options to choose all the groups and event pages that your profile is associated with, and you can make a selection at the time to, to decide which one you want to go live on. Um, the other question I see on Facebook Live is, do you have control over whether Facebook Live will record to Facebook feed or just be viewable when it's live? That's up to your Facebook settings. Um, so the default setting on Facebook is that when you go live with content, it shows up live and it gets registered to your page or profile um, for viewing later. You can change that on Facebook. And then the third question I see is, can you only share a portion of the Facebook Live and stop it after the shareable info is done? Absolutely. Through the, um, through the, through the client itself, you can decide to stop sharing on Facebook or restart sharing on Facebook at your will. You can also go to Facebook and, uh, and actually, you can also stop live streaming through Facebook. But I would imagine that if you're in the webinar as a host, you want to have the control through the, through the webinar platform and you do. So you can stop sharing, start sharing on Facebook when you decide to. Um, and I saw one more question about um, attention indicator. 
And Mary, you'd asked if you pull the question and answer a window over, does it appear that you're not paying attention? No, that's not true. As long as you have any Zoom window in focus, be it question and answer, chat, screen share, video, anything, uh, it, you were paying attention. If you have none of them in focus is when uh, we counted against you for more than 30 seconds, of course. And, right. like and then there's answer. one from Michael, real quick here. He asks, can you link to the Facebook prior to broad broadcasting um, so you can promote it to the attendees? And could you, could you actually broadcast to a million people on Facebook? Yeah, you can broadcast to more than a million people. Facebook, ha I've seen Facebook Live videos which have multiple million people on them. So yes, there's the, the Facebook imposes the limit on that. We don't. And I've seen videos which have five million viewers at a time. So I know you can go as high as that. Um, in terms of getting a link before broadcasting, you get the link after you start broadcasting. So the sequence of things would be you start the webinar, you go live on Facebook, and as soon as you do, you have the link. So if you wanted to have the link to, you know, to share with the attendees before you actually start sharing content, I would recommend you start the webinar on Facebook Live 30 seconds, one minute before you, uh, you know, your webinar content was actually going to be started to be shared. <clears throat> I've got right. one last question uh, about the Zoom manage Zoom management of your Zoom rooms. Um, as I mentioned earlier, it is only available, that hierarchy structure is only available to be built out by the owner. Um, once it's built, admins can then see what they've been given permissions to. We are working on some more changes at UI already. I don't have a release date for when admins will be able to create the hierarchy and other UI changes we're working on. But uh, as I've learned in my three months with Zoom, um, and as my year and a half as a customer prior, um, we release um, new features and, and, and changes and updates at an alarming rate. It blows my mind when our customers bring new things to us, how quick we can turn them around and bring it to our product. So soon is the best I can tell you. I don't know our, our ETA on that particular update, but it will be out there very soon. I would say within the next month at the latest, most likely. Great. And with that, uh, Laura asked Raul a very important question. Um, is this being recorded, and will you be sharing it out? Yes, we will be sending out a follow-up email. And someone had a question as far as a green screen. So this is a green screen material right behind me in case people are asking uh, as well. But yeah, be on the lookout for an email uh, with the link to the recording uh, for that. And then I send a link in the chat window in case you do want to get more information and request a more personal demonstration for you and your organization. Uh, take a look in your chat window. That link is hyperlinked uh, as well. Great. Natasha and Dan, thank you. A great webinar. It's amazing, all the new features. Dan, like you said, we just keep putting up new things so quickly. Um, so, um, and thank you, everybody who joined. We have so many great Zoom customers. We love working with you guys. We really, as, as our CEO says, we like delivering you happiness, and that is true. So thank you for joining, and enjoy all the new features. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.